we've basically covered, you know, since the beginning of the class, started with the core product or technology, segmentation, targeting, positioning, whole product, distribution, partnerships, pricing, branding, and then uh, we'll talk about promotion and then put it all together. So promotion. What is promotion? Um, and I want to start with the Bloom uh, box, Bloom Energy. And many of you have seen this. I, the reason I want to start with Bloom is several folks have approached me, right, and asked me what I think about this clean energy box, and they can't remember anything about it right they can't remember anything about it except that it's a box that does is, is apple using it or is ebay using it or something but but you know it was started by this guy and nasa and whatever and i can't believe how many people have approached me including you know in the subway in san francisco and so on right so whatever these guys did worked okay in terms of promotion so I want to talk about some of the things that they did that made the, their promotion strategy work. So first of all, and I want to come back to all of this, but I'll give you highlights. Um, they launched publicly on 60 Minutes, not bad, February of 2010. Um, so one of the things that they did well was, I mean, that 60 Minutes episode was like a promo. It was brilliant, I mean, for them. Um, so, his founder story. You have to have a founder story, okay? Uh, stories are so important, and the founders is very important. Uh, he came from NASA, he worked on this thing for many years, blah, blah, blah. Third-party endorsement. Endorsements from third-party, very important. And in this case, it was... General Colin Powell. I mean, it can't get more credible than this. The fact that he was on their board, well, that's a different story, right? Uh, and endorsements from other third party folks. Uh, of course, the fact that they raised like 400 million from some of these top VCs, again, uh, it, it's adding to that credibility of this company. Okay. Influentials. I'll touch, I'll touch on all these topics, right, and come back to this. Uh, you know, they show the CEO of eBay who said, oh, yeah, we're using this. We're using this in our data centers, blah, 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 right? Um, one of the Google co-founders, I think it was Sergey, uh, who showed up in the episode, if you look at it, then, you know, I, I, I do want you to after class, they keep coming back to a simple positioning. And they position relative to actually two things versus solar. Uh, it's by saying we're continuous uh, and we have a smaller footprint. And they say this several times. Um, and relative to fossil fuels, of course, saying we're clean as opposed to that, you know, the fossil fuels and, and whatever. Um, social media. So once this thing was, I mean, came out on, on uh, 60 Minutes, it was all over, all over. I mean, Facebook, and I can't believe how many people just posted this video. It was just amazing. Um, you know, media frenzy, blah, blah, blah. So this, they did everything in terms of promotion. They did it really well. Uh, and it's worth a look at the kinds of, at the elements of their promotion strategy. And, you know, more than anything, it was simple, clear, repeatable, and memorable. They kept repeating simple things, right? Kept repeating simple things. We're clean. You know, we're, we're, we're uh, you know, better than solar and also better than, than fossil, blah, 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 right? Um, and so, you know, to, to, to underscore 
the fact that uh, their products could scale and all that and could be cheap, he takes uh, sand. He's like, our products are made out of sand. Brilliant, right? I mean, how, how much cheaper can it get? I mean, the fact that they're $700,000 a piece, that's a different story, right? But, but he's making a point. The point is they're going to become as cheap as sand. So it's, it's just a brilliant way to uh, promote the company. Now, let me go back to promotions in a second. Um, I want to basically mention the fact that we are social animals, okay? People, for those of you who may get offended. We're social people. We're a social species. Um, and product adoption is very social. Before there was a Facebook, product adoption was social and always was and always will be, okay? And think about how you chose to adopt Facebook or Google or LinkedIn uh, or Craigslist. Did you see an ad or did somebody invite you or did you read something in the, in the media? It was always social. Think about it. Somebody invited you. You read something in the in somewhere in the media, uh, and and uh, some credible people, influentials, told you, "Oh yeah, you have to do this. You have to be on this. If you're not on Facebook, you're square or whatever." Right? We are very much social in terms of adopting technology. Okay. Um, and part of it is because we cannot be experts in everything. Now, each one of us is an expert in something, maybe two things. Uh, those of you who are brilliant, three things, but no more than that, right? Uh, and what about the other 10,000 products that we, and services that we use? We just can't be experts in everything. So, in, 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 the other things in which we're not experts, we rely on others. Who do we rely on? There's a concept in psychology called social proof or sociology called social proof, which says we determine what's correct by finding out what other people think is correct. Isn't that interesting? And this is a, a key a concept in sociology. Okay. We, each one of us, determines what's correct by finding out what other people think is correct. Tasting wine. How do we find out which one to taste, which one not to taste? Do we get on Facebook or do we get on, well, right now Facebook, because everybody is on Facebook, but four, five, six years ago it wasn't obvious, right? So we determine what's correct. We determine what to adopt, what to say, what to think, right? According to what others uh, think is correct. Um, and more than anything, we follow experts and authority figures, okay? And our peers. But who do our peers follow? Okay? See? Follow that to infinity. And um, in fact, they hire the uncertainty. The higher the uncertainty in general, the more we look for others for guidance and safety. The more the uncertainty, any kind of way, uncertain products, uncertain situation, uncertain finance, we, the more uncertain life is, the more we look to experts and authority figures and others for guidance to find out what is correct. Okay? And this is a key... Uh, uh, thing to know. So what does this have to do with high technology? Uh, you know, many high tech and clean tech products, uh, especially in new markets and new categories, have a what I call as a high uncertainty quotient. Uh, you know, they're hard to test. Even after you use them, you're not sure uh, how to test them. Okay, uh, we get products and services all the time. 
and many of them are high risk purchases. Okay? The result is that the higher the uncertainty, the more we follow trusted peers, experts, authority figures, and so on. Okay? Uh, the result of all this conversation is this. A few people influence the adoption and purchasing decisions of most of the rest of the market. A few people actually uh, influence the adoption of most of the rest of the world by extension. Okay? Uh, so when I wrote the, the book, the Winners Take All book, I talked to uh, Konstantin Gericke, one of the co-founders, and I asked him, who brought all these folks to LinkedIn? In fact, the first few who got onto LinkedIn were personal selling. He actually went out, he and his co-founders, to talk to a whole bunch of people and ask them personally, get on uh, LinkedIn, okay? And I was one of them. And I didn't know if that's because he was my friend or because he thought that, you know, I was going to have people follow me, right? Probably because I was his friend, but whatever. Um, the first few hundred folks were personal selling. And these few hundred folks invited a few hundred more, more each and so on and so forth. And they, they, they actually uh, me measured all this thing. And he said, he told me 5% of the members at that point had brought the other 95%. And then I asked them, what about that 5%? Who brought that 5%? Does, does that, so I, I forget how many people LinkedIn had at that point, 4 million or so. So if 5% of 4 million brought the other 95%, then that's uh, 4 million, 200,000. So who brought that 200,000 friends, right? 5%. Does that make sense? So if you keep doing that, there's a core of maybe 12 people or 100 people that became key to LinkedIn being as successful as it was, at least in the beginning. Does this make sense? That's social proof at work. Um, so a lot of these companies have grown by word of mouth and word of mouse, okay? Same concept, but online. Um, so let me talk about opinion leaders, because this is key in the adoption of any new category, in any new product. Um, so at the Stanford Business School, they did a study recently in 2010 of the role of opinion leaders, and specifically in healthcare. So they went out and they asked, 1,500 doctors uh, who influenced their adoption of certain prescription medicines. Because it turns out that most drugs are, in fact, prescribed by general practitioners uh, who are general practitioners, okay? And they actually follow, uh, they solicit the opinions of specialists before they adopt uh, medicine, before they start prescribing medicine. Now, uh, it turns out that more than 92% of these physicians reported being influenced by one opinion leader. Okay? So that's the power of an opinion leader. You think 5%? In this case, it's less than 1%. One person influenced uh, most of these 1,500 doctors. That is the power of uh, you know, opinion leaders and influencers. So um, they uh, said that the typical opinion for this particular class of drugs was a research active specialist physician with a university-based hospital who had published seven scholarly articles. They were very specific as to what constitutes 
an expert, an opinion leader in this market, okay? So affiliated with a university, they do research and they've published at least seven scholarly papers, okay? Who knew? It wasn't obvious, okay, not to me anyway. Uh, and 95% of physicians say they got this information from personal contact. So in the area of social media, which is important and we're going to talk about, uh, you know, it's, it's very important to do personal selling. Personal selling is not outmoded at all, especially in the beginning of the life cycle. In the beginning of the life cycle, it's key to go out and sell personally, okay? All right, so let me come back and talk about promotions. What is and what does promotion cover? Um, so promotion is about communications. That's what it is. It's the communication activities that the firm, the organization undertakes to do uh, three things. One, increase adoption. Uh, and that means convert non-users to users, to create product and company awareness, and position and compare against the competition. Okay, so that's number one. Two, help increase usage of existing users. So convert non-users, help increase uh, usage of existing users. And uh, that translates usually into engagement and loyalty programs, okay? Uh, number three, help build the, and protect the brand. Uh, so that means to keep communicating the functional as well as emotional attributes of the brand, okay? Now, if you remember what I said when I talked about branding, do these three points look familiar? Yeah, okay. So, you know, promotion has traditionally been a very fuzzy kind of thing, as well as branding, but it shouldn't be. I mean, the point of promotion, especially in new markets, is to sell. That's basically what it is is to get new adopters, to get adopters to engage more, and to move up the, uh, the, the price point. That's basically what it is, okay? So your goal is to have third parties talk about you and share and spread the good word, uh, and you know, get as much word of mouth and word of mouth as you possibly can, okay? All right, what does it cover specifically? I could list a hundred things that it covers, from coupons to, you know, but I want to talk about a few things tonight. One, personal selling, and I want to keep going back to that, is not outmoded. It's important, especially in the beginning. Public relations, analyst relations, uh, social media, of course, huge, uh, search engine marketing, huge, uh, then advertising. So I want to talk about these things in that order because that's the order that you need to do it in, okay? Then you do advertising, direct market, sales promotion, and so on. So you start with personal selling, then you do public relations and analyst relations, then you do, well, actually social media you, you do all the time. Uh, but these are the kinds of things that, that promotion covers, okay? Um, and you're gonna have to use different tools at different points in the uh, adoption life cycle. If you start advertising here, you're gonna waste your money. You have no need if you're here to do advertising, okay? For instance. Um, so in the beginning of the life cycle, and I'm pointing to here as if this was the Adoption life cycle, right? So in the beginning of a new life cycle, new products and brands <laughs> need credibility. 
So remember, there's going to be a hundred startup companies doing the same thing. Okay? I mean, why should anyone pay attention to you? Whether it's the media or analysts or let alone potential customers. Okay? I mean, it's going to be hard to make a decision when a hundred companies, 30 companies, 50 companies, which is the case in every new category, an interesting category anyway, pop up. So you need to build credibility. Uh, and third parties are important in creating credibility. Third parties. Uh, so part of what you're going to do is to enable your champions, your influencers. First, find out who the influencers are, which is not always obvious. Okay? I mean, just the fact that you go to LinkedIn and LinkedIn says in the group, oh, this person is the influencer of the day, doesn't mean anything with all due respect to LinkedIn. Okay? Uh, you know, you need to find out who those key influencers are in your market. Uh, social media is a must, and part of what you need to do is you need to be a thought leader. In the beginning, you need to be a thought leader. So, uh, not only do you want to sell, but you want to sell yourself as an expert. Okay? Uh, and I'll come back to what that means. Um, later, you're going to engage public relations and analyst relations and social media relations, of course, to generate initial publicity. Uh, but first, you need to convert champions through personal selling. Have I said that enough? <laughs> okay. You can't just do something out of, you know, your office. You have to get out and sell that way. Okay? Uh, champions, though, once you have identified them, once you know who they are, they will go out there and they will sell your stuff, okay? I mean, they, 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 once you have identified the right champions and the right influencers, they're going to do your job better than you can, okay? Because people are going to trust them, especially if they have no monetary affiliation with you, okay? So I can't believe... I mean, if I got 10% out of every solar city installation that, that has been done because of me, I, you know, I, I, I would retire. Actually, I wouldn't. But you know what I mean, right? Uh, you know, it, it's like I love what, what, what some of these companies are doing, and I go out there and I spread the message. Okay? So find out who the key influencers are and, and the champions are in your market. Uh, you know, make the, your product communicate for you, if you can, right? If it's web-based, uh, make it communicate for you. Um, let's see, what else? Communication should be clear, simple, repeatable, and memorable. Okay? Simple. Stories. Simple. Messages. And I'll come back to, to uh, some of what companies have done. This is, I'm not saying, yes. Um, just on that last slide. Yes. Uh, you, you mentioned um, yes. being able to get people to spread the word yeah. by making the word easy to spread. Yes. Um, do you have any like particular methods of like, other than having a good product that people want to talk about yeah. and getting the right people on board, yeah. what are some ways that you can enable people to spread your message easier? I'll keep talking about it the whole evening. And if I haven't answered your question, then, then ask at the end. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Um, so let, let me give you an example. Um, you know, not, again, not that we should all go to Oprah, and she has retired, I hear. But, you know, Kindle was not going anywhere. You know, Kindle, Amazon, for all its billions of dollars in advertising, the Kindle was going nowhere until a certain Oprah Winfrey mentioned it in her show. And she said, uh, where's the quote? I'm telling you, it's absolutely my new favorite thing in the world. And these are the numbers. Traffic went up 
immediately on Amazon for the Kindle. Okay, Amazon to I mean traffic to Amazon altogether, the largest bookseller in the world, right? Amongst other things, went up six percent. Eighty percent of Kindle-related blog posts mentioned Oprah uh, the day after. Okay. Traffic from Oprah to Amazon.com increased 15,000%. Okay? This is what, you know, some of these mentioned, right, will do for you. Okay? Now, it's not just Oprah. There are a lot of numbers about what some companies, some, you know, influentials and whatnot have done for products. Now, in order for things to spread, you need to make things as clear and simple and repeatable as possible, but not simpler. I'm just modifying something Einstein said, right? Einstein said, make things as simple as possible, but not simpler, okay? I'm saying, make things as clear and simple and repeatable as possible. And that means your product, your story, your messages, because for these things to spread, for things to spread, they have to be simple. They have to be clear, okay? And repeatable. Okay. The uber simple, uh, you know, product. Uh, easy, clear positioning. So when the media talked about this company, what was the headline? TurboTax for the multinational. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's clear. Okay? That's why you need to be well positioned so that others can talk about you in a very simple way. Uh, Skyfire, you know, the PC web really fast on your phone. Okay? This is an email I got from um, Apple. It's positioning itself relative to so. itself. That's what leaders do. And this, this, this is the whole email, right? It's thinner, lighter, faster, FaceTime, smart covers, 10 hour battery, that's it. How many words is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's it under 10 words. Simple. No need to say more. Does this make sense? I mean, all of these things are, are forms of communication. Okay. Now, compared to this, tell me what this company does. This is what I call fortune cookie communications because they could come from a fortune cookie. Business is all about relationships and managing them. So, yeah, I mean, I, I know that. Converges, outthinking, outdoing. What? <laughs> what is it that you do, right? Why should I care? What's your value proposition? So I spend a while on this, which I won't do. And the only reason I have this is because I thought it was brain dead. Right? What about the name Converges? What does that tell you? So, you know, you can spend uh, minutes here trying to figure out what they do. You can't. And you won't. Does that make sense? You need clear, simple, repeatable. Clear and simple. Okay? What do they do? Who knows? Right? Outsource PPO. Huh? It's an outsource PPO. Outsource PPO. That's what they do. What about Palm? Life moves fast, don't miss a thing. Well, duh, I know that, but why, what's your point? Okay, why should I use a Palm as opposed to an iPhone or a Blackberry or whatever? Okay, you're not telling me anything. Okay, that's what I call fortune cookie communication. Don't waste your time and money. Okay. No wonder they had to sell itself. Okay. Does that make sense? See the difference? What about this one? 
tell me what this company does from the name, from this, from whatever. First of all, the name, Jamalto. And then, lost my phone, what about my contacts? A whole bunch of missing. Anyone? A dating service. A dating service, very good. Not really, but, but that's a good guess. It recovered your lost numbers. For quick and practical answers to your digital security questions when communicating, buying, traveling, and surfing, there's only one place. Enjoy your digital life. What do they do? What do they do? I still don't know, right? Huh? I mean, that's such a waste of money, right? I, I, you know, I wonder why some people don't get fired. I'm if serious. Huh? Just ask Jamalto. <laughs> Just ask, like, you know, I have nothing better to do in life. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that, like, I feel that sometimes that's a strategy to be as ridiculous and, and, I don't know, as possible because it grabs your attention, like, clearly we're talking about it. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. I feel like some companies do that. But had, had you ever heard about Jamalto? I mean, yeah. the, the only reason we're talking about it is that I'm highlighting as a, as a brain dead kind of promotional, you know, uh, campaign, right? All right, so I'll come back to more examples, but I want to move to stories, right? Um, and, you know, stories. I talked about it when we did branding. I want to come back to it because uh, stories are so important, and especially on the web, especially in social media. Stories are huge, okay? Now, um, here's a, a good quote from Governor Brown. How do you communicate to 38 million people, or 38 billion? Well, there aren't 38 billion, but a billion on Facebook. You can't sit down and talk to them. So it's all about gesture and symbol and narrative and the drama. Who's the antagonist? It's all about story, right? And I don't, I don't want to rehash what I talked about story because, you know, we grew up with stories as kids, as a, as a species. We grew up with stories, okay? Now, 2007, when way before the Tesla uh, burst onto the public consciousness, here's what Forbes wrote about Tesla. Why did Martin Eberhard start Tesla Motors? And, and read this. And tell me if this is not just uh, basically the, the best way to put together uh, you know, a data sheet with a story. So of course, you know, in 2000, environmentally conscious Silicon Valley engineer was shopping for a sports car with low emission. And the search was fruitless, okay? Hint, creation story is coming. All right? And of course, every time our search is fruitless, we start a company, right? Remember how Netflix got started? Oh, you know, it, it, he, it, he got screwed, 40 bucks and late fees. So of course, we start a company. Okay, but this is a creation story. All right? So he starts, you know, a company and he builds the Tesla Roadster. And now, after that creation story, comes the actual data. $92,000 two-seater that can go from zero to 60 in four seconds, powered entirely by lithium ion. It's all there, you know, the clarity of what it is. It's a roadster that costs $90,000, looks sexy, but see what I mean by stories? This is a creation story. And every Silicon Valley company has one at least every successful Silicon Valley company. So if we go back to Bloom Energy, his creation story was, oh, he was working in NASA, he was working on all these advanced kind of, you know, energy materials, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he got frustrated and he went out and he raised all this bundle of money because he wants to save the world. Okay? That's the creation story. And that's very important. 
So and every company has one, yes. So do a lot of them fictionalize it? Because we're in a class saying, okay, what is this segment and like what's the, you know, what's the pain and everything just through like market research. So do a lot of them just fictionalize their story? So do they fictionalize their story? So there's always more than one story. Does that make sense? I mean, there's, there's seldom, I mean, as an entrepreneur, I can say, there's seldom one reason why you start a company. Now, this was probably true, mm -hmm. but there may have been four or five different stories, okay? What ends up happening is that you tell four or five different stories and one of them sticks, okay? It doesn't mean that it's not true. It only means that that's the one that sticks, if that makes sense. I don't know if he fictionalized it. I want to assume that it's true, right? Huh? Yeah. Well, it sticks, right? I mean, so, so you come down to three, four, five stories, and one of them is going to stick, OK? So all right. Now, let me come back again to the opinion leaders and the influentials. Uh, I already talked about it. 5% uh, brought the other. 95% on, uh, uh, on LinkedIn and so on. And 5% of that 5% brought in those 5% and so on and so forth, right? Um, but the interesting thing about LinkedIn is that yes, they did personal selling, but they did not do personal selling to just everyone because they have no time, okay? In their case, they chose basically two sets of people, VCs, Okay, who because they were in Silicon Valley, they wanted folks who would attract, they wanted to attract entrepreneurs, in other words. Okay, and you know, who follows, where does, you know, where do entrepreneurs go? Where the money is, right? We all want to raise money and start companies and whatever. So having a bunch of VCs would be a good way to attract entrepreneurs. And they also uh, asked entrepreneurs that they knew. So if you saw successful entrepreneurs, and if you saw VCs on LinkedIn, that in and of itself would attract. So they didn't just go out and ask everyone to join. Does that make sense? It was everybody in high tech. Uh, so everyone was in high tech, but within that, it was VCs and entrepreneurs, okay? So they actually focused on that. They actually focused on those markets. They did personal selling. They focused. They segmented. They targeted. Uh, and then, of course, once they had a few thousand folks, then they created critical mass, blah, blah, blah. OK? Now, influencers. The traditional model is this. You're the vendor. You go to influencers who are either experts, analysts, influentials, super users. They will generate credibility. They will act as reference. And when the media or you know, the market or whatnot, they're thinking about which company to adopt within that category, they'll be like, oh, so these are the folks on, they go to about.com. I mean, to about within your website. And if they see folks that they trust, who say, oh my God, this is a great company. Okay? When the media is writing something about a company, they always, always, at least you know, the, the, the strong media, they always call someone who is either you know, an influencer, an expert, an analyst, or whatnot, to have a quote from them. So this is important for the market, for the users, and so on. Now, um, you know, this mass media or the trade media will generate publicity, and users will uh, look at that and say, oh, OK, so the Chronicle, the Mercury News, the whatever, TechCrunch, they're talking about this company, let, let me check them out, OK? And finally, in the end, after you've generated some critical mass and you've generated start, you've started building a brand, then you do advertising. 
Now, this is the traditional simplified model. Life is not that simple anymore, okay? But this is an easy, simplified way to look at life. Now, the new model uh, gets more complicated. And it gets more complicated uh, because of the user-generated content. And because of the fact that the borders between publicity and advertising and the user are blurring. Okay? So when we go to Amazon and we check something out, we look at the users. What are they saying? Before we go to a restaurant, we check out Yelp or whatever, right? So we check out others, peers, influencers, experts, and, and whatnot. And here's what's interesting. Within the user community, it's not a big mass. Within the user community, there are users that others refer to when making adoption decisions. Does that make sense? There are champions within the market that when the rest of the market says, oh, so this company adopted this, they're using this, therefore, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Does that make sense? And those are usually the tough, the tough characters. Okay. Today, it's not as simple anymore. Today, uh, vendors are the media. The media are the vendors. Users are the media and the vendors, right? So things have become a little more complicated, okay? And, and this has been part of the, uh, the whole social media movement in that, you know, life used to be simpler, but now, you know, everyone is doing video, everyone is publishing, everyone is uh, doing blogs, everyone is doing wikis, and so on and so forth. It doesn't mean that the social adoption is not happening. It is. It's just that it's a little bit more complicated to find out who those influencers are. And they are there, okay? So, you know, within, even within the influencers, there's some who influence the other influencers. Uh, you know, when in the media, there are some that influence others in the media. Okay, sometimes I go to trade shows as media, right? Because I write for Forbes.com. And you know what people do in the media room? They talk. Okay, they talk. What did you like today? Which company, right? So this is how to spread the word. So in the media, people talk and influence each other. Does that make sense? So that's happening all the time amongst users, amongst media, uh, and so on. Blogs, everybody, everyone is trying to influence everyone else. Yes? Just a comment. In the yeah. New York Times has an article about um, this movie Battleship, which, which cost like 300 million to, 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 to make. <clears throat> and uh, they were positioning it as, as a movie like the Transformer, which is a very popular series. Transformer, yeah. yeah. But apparently the, the blogs now didn't buy it. And, and they've been push pushing the other way, and, and they, they killed them. And in the first week, they, they, the revenue was only 20 million bucks for sale dollars. Right, right, right. So, good point. So, the fact that, you know, you promote it heavily and successfully and all that, doesn't mean that it's going to be a success. Okay? Just like Bloom Energy. All right? Just like uh, the Segway. The Segway has you know, had some of the best promotion in the world. It was on every TV show, on the cover of Forbes. It was, I mean, talked about heavily by everyone. What was it, 10 years ago? And yet, that company has gone nowhere fast. Uh, so, and that's a very good point. Promotion is part of your strategy. It's not it. The fact that you have a great promotional strategy is not going to make you a winner. Everything has to work. If the product has to work, 
You know, your, your, your sales strategy has to work, your branding has to work, your segmenting has to work, your targeting has to work, the whole thing has to work. Does that make sense? Promotion is one element in the whole marketing and the whole strategy plan. Does that make sense? So that's a good point. Um, so back to influencers. So in this whole mess, the problem with influencers is, yeah, let's, let's agree that influencers can move markets. But, you know, how do you know who these folks are? I mean, is there a list of influencers somewhere that I can say, okay, Time Magazine, the 100 most influential people, should I go to them? Should I go to Lady Gaga and, and see if she's going to influence the sale of, you know, a, 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 a heat conversion device to power plants? I doubt it. Okay? So in some uh, traditional or mainstream markets, yes. You know, if, if you sell personal technology, if you sell an iPad, if you sell an iPhone, then you know where to go. You know that you have to go to David Pogue at the New York Times. You know you have to go to Walt Mossberg at the Wall Street Journal and so on, right? That's well known. Uh, you know, if you sell wine, Robert Parker is it, okay? He moves markets. Uh, you know, jazz music, then you know you have to talk to Ben Radcliffe and so on and so forth, okay? Now... Uh, each market that already exists has the influentials and you know who they are. Of course, if you know who they are, a million others know who they are. So then the issue becomes, how do you get in? And then you have to pay money to PR companies, blah, blah, blah. But in the beginning, which is when it's key, in the beginning of the life cycle, what do you do? Especially in new markets. In new categories. New categories may not have influencers because it's so new. Does that make sense? So who are these people? Is there a master list? No. The answer is no. Okay? The answer is, I mean, who are the influencers for the heat to power energy recovery for coal power plants? Remember, we did the segmentation and the targeting and so on. The answer is no one, because that does not exist. Okay, we're creating that category, or trying to. Okay, Lady Gaga is not going to do anything here. Okay, so back to our uh, uh, Stanford GSP study. They studied 1,500 uh, doctors, and this is what they got. Okay, so the three most beautiful words in the English language. Ask the customer, okay? Go out and talk to your target market, all right? You don't have to talk to 1,500 people, but talk to 100. Remember last week, Gary Kremen? He talked to 100 women. He identified, uh, basically he thought, okay, if I can get women on board much, then men will follow. Pretty much. That, that was his thought process. It's the law of the universe. Huh? It's the law of the universe. It is the law of the universe, absolutely. Okay? And so he went out and he asked them, what will make you go on and what are your issues and challenges and all that? So you need to go out and ask your target, you know, uh, where, what do you read? Who do you follow? You know, these are the products. How did you buy these products? Okay, who did you ask? Okay, so you need to do the work if it's a new category. Because if there is a master list of influencers, it's probably all over. Okay, that means a thousand companies have that master list. So you figure out who that one doctor or five doctors in your market are, would be uh, as far as influentials. Does that make sense? Okay, let me talk about social media then. And, you know, I, I, social media, boy. And I wanna start with, I, I don't think I need to convince anyone here how important social media are. Um, and and I, I think that in terms of public consciousness, uh, 
and the importance of social media, uh, I think that Barack Obama's campaign last time was a watershed moment because um, on election day, 25% of Obama voters were already linked to him through social media, through uh, Facebook, Twitter, and his blogs. 25%. Now, if you look, that's 17.5 17 million people. What was the winning margin? Nine and a half million people. Okay? You can argue that social media was the difference between winning and losing. Okay? And then that's how important it can be. Of course, he did a lot of personal selling and, and all, a lot of other things, right? But it's, it's huge. It's important. Okay? So social media, no matter what, from the beginning, from day one, social media is part of your strategy. Um, and especially if you're in a new market, in a new category, uh, it's, it's absolutely, and especially from the beginning of the life cycle, you have to do it. Okay? But where do you start? And he, he, here's the big problem. Where do you start? Okay? This is the social media landscape as of May 17th, that's Thursday or Friday, when I downloaded this, at 7.31 p.m. Now, you, you may argue have nothing better to do at 7.30 than to be doing this, um, but, but I can tell you one thing. You know, this includes how many? Dozens, maybe hundreds of companies, Facebook and LinkedIn and, you know, Zynga and this and that, but it's already outdated. It doesn't include uh, Pinterest, so it's outdated, right? Which is the latest darling, right, in social media. And I'm making a point that it's, 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 it's tough to figure out all the details, and I'm not going to tell you, uh, partly because it's going to be obsolete by tomorrow. What I can tell you is this. Um, content. Content. Think content, all right? On the web, you are what you say. On the web, you are what you say. Now, can anyone tell me what this company does? Who knows? Yes. Huh? It's a dictionary company. It's a dictionary company. Who knows? I mean, what a waste of time, right? I mean, throw in a buzzword, they have it, okay? <laughs> On the web, you are what you say. In their case, nothing. Okay? So, social media is a conversation. No matter, you know, whether you're on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, it's a conversation. It's not a one-way thing like old media. It's a conversation. And you need to keep that in mind. Um, you know, it's, it's important to know which media to use, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or blogs or whatever. But um, what matters most is content and stories. Uh, let me take that back. Stories and messages. And all of this comes under the content rubric. Okay? Okay. So remember, if you remember nothing else about social media, it's that A, it's a conversation, and B, it's all about messages and stories. Messages and stories. Okay? I have a question. How, how much of the social media influencing if you are making a component that goes into somebody's company system? Tens of thousands. See, if it's thousands, then maybe not that much. If it's tens of thousands, yeah, this is important. This is important because of what I just talked about. Because adoption is a social process, okay? And you, you want to see what everybody else is saying, what everybody else is doing, who's adopting, all those good things. Does that make sense? Now, the smaller the market, the more you do personal selling and trade shows and all that. But the larger the market, the more this is important, right? And that's a good point. I remember... You know, I was giving a talk at, uh, let's call them a large uh, uh, router company, 
Um, and you know, uh, for that one product, they had a total of five potential customers, right? And they were doing advertising. And here I am telling them, stop, right? Five potential customers, call them. Move in next to them, right? Put a person to live right next to everyone. Buy each one of them a house, right? With your router. Does that make sense? So in that case, no, you don't have to do any of this, okay? But, you know, if you're talking thousands, tens of thousands, yeah, then you have to do this. Okay, outlets, blogs, especially if you're a, a, a new company, you have to create, uh, you know, you have to establish expertise. So you need to do a blog. Uh, you have to engage potential customers and you have to get constant feedback. And blogs are a really great way to do this. Um, you know, you need to communicate with end users as well as influencers. So, um, you know, the media, whether it's the New York Times or uh, the Chronicle or whatever, when they're going to do an article, they do a Google search. They do a Google search and read a few blogs before they actually decide who to talk to. Okay, that's how important blogs are because you know, the media or whatever, they will check blogs. They'll read the content, pro and, 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 and con, and, and then decide what to write. Um, so, you know, blogs can establish you as uh, experts, and, you know, those who may potentially be your customers can become engaged, okay? Uh, the thing about blogs, as well as most social media, is this, you have to be authentic, okay? Which means transparent and consistent. Uh, you have to be authentic, okay? Don't try and be something that you're not. And we talked about that in branding. Uh, you know, social networks, yes, you need to do pages on Facebook and on LinkedIn and you know you have to tweet and all that stuff okay and but the purpose again the purpose of this is not as a one-way communication thing the main thing that you want to do is get feedback and engage and listen that more than anything so number one you have to establish your expertise number two you have to establish a feedback loop okay listen to what folks are saying, it's a conversation. Uh, wikis, you know, not a whole lot of people do wikis, but if you are in a category that may need deep, deep, you know, new expertise, a wiki is a good way to, uh, to do it, okay? To engage people, and as well as to establish expertise. Uh, you know, if you're in the gaming business, wikis are a must, okay? Wikis have, you know, entries for the characters, uh, for how to play, for how to program, for each level. And so, I mean, if you're in gaming, wikis are a must. If you're in the education business, wikis are pretty much a must, okay? So depending on the market, you may want to look into creating one as a way to establish uh, expertise. Uh, and needless to say, you know, we're, a, we're very much a video, audio, and we're a visual uh, crowd. And so you have to do photos, you have to do visuals, you have to do uh, pictures, you have to be on YouTube, on iTunes, uh, you know, you have to do video, no matter what you do. Okay, whether it's as a catalog or as propaganda, how to do this and how to do that, YouTube uh, and so on, they're a must. Okay. Yes. Uh, YouTube and Vimeo or whichever, yeah. right? I mean, you know, I I really have no preference, but you have to be there. You have to do video, you have to do audio, and you have to do photo. 
In terms I mean, of search, would you want to be on YouTube? Yeah, I mean, I mean me personally, I prefer to be on YouTube. Uh, but you'd be surprised at how people find you, right? But me personally, I prefer YouTube, yes. So just a comment. Um, so Emirates Airlines is projected to be the world's largest by 2015. Emirates? Yeah. Okay. And they, um, they're running a new 30-second splash on TV with a new kind of theme song and kind of imagery and a very commercial. You're like, well, what is this all about? Yeah. The symbol comes down. Anyway, I do a search and um, talk about a brilliant way of tying in visual, a song, uh, imagery, projecting who their future customer is and why they're going to be kind of the, the connecting dots around yeah. the globalized world. It just takes all of these good things and I think uh, Becca trying to find out who their um, PR agency was. Yeah. And I don't think their US based company is too good. It's too good. <laughs> yeah. It's it's, say, but, yeah. Yeah. So Emirates, if anyone wants to take an example of what we're talking about, interesting. Take a look at that on the web yeah. and you'll You'll be impressed. Yeah, interesting. And, and thanks for that. And it's not either or. I mean, it's a combination of things. So Emirates has television. They have YouTube. They have all of the above, right? Um, so I'll check them out. Um, thank you. Now, when you think, no matter, no matter. I mean, a, a lot of these, uh, you know, social media companies are going to come and go. But the way that you have to think for your social media strategy is you think like a publisher, okay? Now, if you walk into a newsstand, for instance, uh, you see magazines that have different targets, okay? Uh, whether it's Scientific American or, you know, uh, who, which has a certain audience or MIT's Technology Review or Solar This, or Cosmopolitan, or each one has a different target audience, okay? And they deliver content for that specific target audience. They don't try to be everything for everybody. So the first thing that you have to do is, surprise, targeting. Who is your target reader? Hint. Who is your target market? Okay, that is your reader. You don't write for everybody, you write for your reader. Now, specifically, what do you write about? Well, the first thing is, hmm, let's feel their pain. What are they looking for? What's their challenge? What's their problem? Okay, and you address that in two ways. So. It's not just about addressing the pain. Addressing the pain is important, and you have to do it. But you also need to inform and entertain. So that's the combination. Inform and entertain, as well as solve their problem. So don't forget, you're telling stories, you're entertaining, uh, and many of the stories that you're going to tell are going to be about other customers. Okay? Customers like them who solved a problem that they had with your product. It's a story. And you send the message. Does that make sense? You story inform. With a human. Huh? Story with a bit of humor. Yeah, exactly. With humor only if that's your brand. Right? If that's not your brand, then don't go there. Does that make sense? So, so but entertaining. It has to be entertaining. Because, you know, we have, you know, we're not going to focus on any one story, any one web page for more than a few seconds. You have to grab them. Okay? You have to grab them. What's the number one rule of story? The number one rule of story? Emotional. Huh? Emotional. Yes, it's emotional. But the number one rule is you grab them by the throat and you never let them go. Okay? That's the number one rule. I mean, in the first paragraph, you have to capture them. Otherwise, you lost them. Okay, that's the kind of world that we live in. Okay, um, stories that they can share. It's a conversation. So, you know, if they come back and say something, you have to respond. Okay? You have to. I mean, that's part of the give and take. That's part of the conversation. Talk to them, not... Add them. Does this make sense? 
talk to them, not at them. Nor about them. Huh? Nor about them. No, you can talk about them, about peers, right? But basically, I mean respectfully, okay? Not at them. And of course, this is all going to have to end up in a sale, okay? Because that's what the company is all about, all right? So offer a path to sales, but don't be pushy. Don't be salesy. Does that make sense? Okay, sales are going to be an end result if you gain their trust, if you engage them well, if you if they think you're solving their problems. Okay, but don't be pushy. Okay, now, the last uh, thing that I want to talk about is advertising. Um, so, you've done your personal selling, you started building your brand, uh, you, you know, the thing started uh, critical mass, you know your influencers, your influencers are, are helping you, you're, you're, you're on social media, and so on and so forth. Now you can start advertising. Advertising as such. Okay? Now, advertising after you have built a brand. So building a brand through advertising, big, big mistake. Basically, it's a waste of money. Uh, use all those other tools. Use publicity. Use influencers. Use champions. Use all those tools to build the brand. Okay? Word of mouth. But later, uh, you are going to do advertising. Hopefully, you'll get to that point and you'll be one of the winners. Okay? Uh, and mostly, you do it to remind users that you exist, right? Uh, you know, keep them engaged, stay in the consideration set. So most markets end up with a handful of companies, if not one or two. You want to remain in that consideration set, meaning the two or three or four companies that the user engages with, right, or buys in that category. And of course, defend the brand. Uh, when you do advertising, you have to be simple, consistent, and memorable. Simple, consistent, and memorable. And I think I'm repeating this because it's so important. Uh, does anyone remember the Apple Get a Mac? Brilliant. I mean, just, it was very simple. Here's a Mac, here's a PC, and here are the differences. And that campaign lasted four years. And if we have, let's see if we have time to show one. Yeah. Um, if you are in a services business um, or your product is an experience good, remember what an experience good is? You have to experience it before you know how good it is. Um, then the promotion should emphasize people. Okay, emphasize other people's experience so that you can adopt socially based on others' experience. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, let me show you a few examples. Uh, this is an old BlackBerry, the company formerly known as BlackBerry. When they started taking off, uh, this is basically a commercial. Ask Nina Garcia why she loves her BlackBerry. Okay? So don't ask me, here's a customer. Ask her, so this is an experience good, or it was back then. Uh, basically they're telling you, ask someone else. Ask whoever you know who uses BlackBerry why they use it. These were the days that generated the CrackBerry, you know, and all that, yes? Is she the influencer for financial people everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it because at this point they're advertising. So once you're advertising, it means that you already went through influencers is in the beginning of the life cycle. Um, so here's an, adver uh, an advertisement that I showed before. Now they emphasize what? Value proposition. So they say you can cost, you can cut your heating and cooling costs up to 80%. That's, 
that's a value proposition. Okay? So, I mean, there's no one thing. It's a set of messages that you have to deliver when you do advertising. And value prop is one of them. Um, this is a very simple one. Run applications up to 50x faster. Simple? Clear? Yeah. Okay, I want to know more. Because, well, their name is meaningless. But the value prop says, says it all. Okay? Uh, here's positioning. This is a positioning exercise. Clear and simple. What Google is to uh, public search, we are to private secure search. Positioning exercise. Okay? Um, here's value prop. What do we do? What can you do with this? Well, see more genes using less sample. Okay? Now, I don't know what an expression array system is, but I know what it does. Okay? Again, simple positioning. Dyson, all other vacuums clog, except us. You're actually positioning everyone else. Okay? Relative to you. Let them defend themselves. This is a, a hard one to pull off, but if you can, it's brilliant. Yes? Can you uh, please indulge us with a quick example of like um, an incandescent light bulb versus an LED light bulb? Something that's got, uh, <laughs> uh, they claim it's got, you know, almost 15x more lifetime. Yeah. 15 greater, you know, it goes from two years to 30 years. You know, basically that's like saying our light bulbs don't go out, but obviously they, they do go out at the end. Right. You know, anything come to mind? Uh, let, let, let's finish this oh. and then I'll, I'll yeah. Um, you know, there's, that's a good question. So first, who is your target market, right? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, there is a Swiss watch, I forget the name, that has the father and the teenage son. Okay, and they're basically saying Patek Philippe. That yeah, one. Yeah. And what are they saying? It's like it's priceless. It's like it's like a generational money. thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll outlast you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That, 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 did you all hear the question? It'll outlast you. It's generational. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you get the wind, we get the technology. Simple. Date, okay, <laughs> as opposed to Gemalto. I mean, see the difference? Assuming Gemalto is a dating, it's not a dating site. <laughs> okay, simple and memorable. Uh, when, it's not just Apple. Has anyone seen the Sun Run commercials? See what they're doing? It's very simple. And what's their message? Save money. It's about saving money. I mean, solar is not for hippies anymore. What does this company do? Uh, what do you mean? They're driving technologies tailored for business. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a waste or what? Core speed, <laughs> business ecosystems with context, relevance, and identity? Who gets paid to do this? That's an expensive business card because they have the rounded corners. <laughs> <laughs> they have the rounded corners. So this is a waste, don't do that. Uh, another one, I showed this already. Uh, what about this one? No one under 17 admitted with a parent or a cardigan? What? I mean, you know, this is, uh, I forget, this was on Forbes or Fortune magazine. Each one of these is $100,000. Each one, each issue, right? 50 grand, 100 grand. And here's the worst part. Even they say the smallest error in communication can lead to confusion. Even they admit to that. Right? I guess it was intentional. I doubt it. Look at this one. Okay? I doubt it. How about this one? Do you think this was intentional, Yahoo? The internet has a personality, yours? What? What does that mean? 
does that mean you're going to compete with Facebook or you're going to have better search than than uh, Google or what does this mean? Okay. And you have spent a hundred million dollars in this campaign. This is only a couple of years ago. Talk about a waste of money. This one, fortune cookie, intelligence powers results. The last thing I want to say is no matter what you do, measure. Measure and measure, okay? So you start every campaign with what are my goals? What are my objectives of this specific campaign? Is it to generate a million of revenue? Is it, you know, to generate a million page views? What is it that you're trying to do with that specific campaign? Measure tangibles. Things like how many prospects did you reach? What was the response rate? What was the close rate? Things like that. You gotta measure that. Uh, and measure intangibles. Awareness, emotional qualities, and, and, and so on and so forth. Okay? Before and after. Before and after. And then incorporate that in a feedback loop. See what worked, see what didn't work, keep what worked, and do it again. Okay? And you don't need, I mean, there's a ton of software out there that you can use, but you don't need that. You can oh, just use a spreadsheet. Okay? Revenues per sale is 90,000. I hit 8,100, uh, you know, prospects. 1.5% uh, called me back. That's 121 people. A third were qualified. Boom. I generated 1.1 million. This is an actual marketing campaign, by the way. Right? Um, here are my costs. Here's my revenue. Boom. Simple. Okay? Of course, if you want to use some kind of software tool, that's fine. It's, at the end of the day, the same kind of stuff, okay? And, you know, there's a ton of tools out there to track whether it's tangibles or intangibles. Google Analytics, Buzzmetrics, eKern, Nielsen's, blah, 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 right? I won't tell you which one to use. I'm just saying that whatever you do, measure, okay? Because Promotion tends to be fuzzy, especially, you know, if you go through ad agencies and so on. Don't, it doesn't need to be, yes? Um, in, a, in a typical marketing campaign, you might have, you know, in the typical life cycle of a lead, you might have like five, ten campaigns that hit them before they uh, decide to make a buying decision. Yes. And, you know, they could have, it, it's unclear oftentimes to me, you yeah. know, who brought them in as a lead in the first place? Sure. And then who, uh, you know, which campaign convinced them to buy and why? Do you have any? I mean, I know it's a complex problem. It's probably a bigger topic yeah. than you can answer right now. But yeah. you know, what in general would you say about you know how you how you weight the value of campaigns in that less certain environment where you can't just say, oh yeah, I went to one trade show, I signed up 50 people for a million dollars. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, promotional campaigns are cumulative and that's the value of brand and stuff but the way to get around you know the lack of uh, measurements is to be focused so you know to the Bay Area uh, have a one campaign just in the Bay Area have another different campaign in LA have another campaign in Fresno and another one in Boston vary things and see what works does that make sense so that you know, use as little overlap between geographies or the end of one and the beginning of the other. Uh, and, you know, do it in a multi-channel kind of way and do it differently so that you can measure each one of them. Yes, it's a tough problem, but those are, you know, simple ways to get around the, the overlap. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, check this at home. You have different tools for different points in the life cycle um, and you know back to the beginning what I said uh, you know many of the things that made the bloom energy uh, launch so brilliant was you know influentials credibility building 
uh, the champions, especially in their case, customers, Google, eBay. Uh, simple positioning, very simple. Simple messages. Uh, you know, they had videos on YouTube, they had Twitter campaigns, they had, I mean, basically they were all over the map, social media map. Uh, and everything was meant to be shared to be, you know, and it was. I mean, it, this thing lit up the whole social media like nothing else I've seen, you know, in energy, anyway, uh, in a long time. Uh, so, so, you know, check them out. And everything was simple, clear, repeatable, and memorable. Uh, check them out on, on YouTube and see how they repeat things. And it's, they make also great use of stories. Uh, how did you come up with the name of the companies? Well, you know, we had a uh, contest with our, our employees, but I didn't like it. And at the end of all that process, it was my son who came up with the name. Right? What a great story. How endearing. Is it true? I don't know. But, you know, it's a very endearing story. Every element in your strategy has to work. The fact that you have a brilliant promotional strategy does not mean you're going to be successful. Your product strategy has to be right in every single way. Uh, you know, all of this has to make sense. Every single element has to make sense, not only uh, you know, at one point in time, but all through the life cycle. Okay? All right. Um, Questions?